Hey Waylands backers, it's Justin at Waylands and today I'm going to walk you through the Secure360 app. So I'm using an iPhone for this demonstration, but the features are very similar to Android. So prior to going into the Secure360 app, we're going to go into our Wi-Fi settings and we're going to select the Secure360 Wi-Fi hotspot that it produces. This is how you're going to interface between the app and the camera. So your password and network ID is going to be printed on the bottom of the camera as well as on the quick start guide. So you'll want to enter in your password and then we're going to go back to the Secure360 app. You're going to get a welcome screen where you could sign in or create a new account. And we definitely recommend doing this so that all of your settings will be saved. But you don't need an account uh, to access your camera, so you could just X out of this. And the first screen you'll see here is your saved camera. So if you have more than one camera, you could swipe between screens of different cameras you have saved. So um, this camera, you could actually name it in your settings. I just have the Secure360 Wi-Fi camera as the default. So I'm going to click on this screen here and it's going to take us into the live preview mode. I have it turned off now because uh, my office is a mess. <laughs> but uh, we could view some video clips saved to the SD card. And right here we have a driving video and the driving videos are indicated by the gray timeline marker. And the clips labeled with the orange marker are impact detected events. In the clip here, I'm getting in and out of my car, opening and closing the door, so that registered as an impact detection. So you'll see the time stamped events here in the timeline. And uh, you could just scroll through different clips and events. Here in the preview window, it shows we're viewing in HD and we're in the split screen mode. But to switch your view, you simply tap on that immersive button and you can scroll around your 360 degree environment. If you want to see something specific in full screen, you just click the full screen button that will change the uh, aspect ratio into landscape mode and make it full screen. Here's an example of a motion detection event in parked mode. This is where a UPS delivery driver walks past the vehicle, creates a 30 second clip. So yep, you can see right here, February 8th at 5.27 p.m. So you know exactly when an event happened. So another thing for the driving clips, you can create a highlight by clicking the highlight button. And that is designated with a blue marker. You can easily click and select that highlight to export a 30 second portion of that video. Or you could select the entire video and export the entire thing if you'd like. But if there's something specific that you want to export, just click the highlight and then you can export that to your photo library. Gives you an estimate on the file size and the duration there. And next I'm going to go into the camera settings. First we have the camera's name. You could adjust that however you like if you know you have your if you have multiple cameras. Uh, this is actually my Wi-Fi camera number two, so I'm gonna change that. And here it shows your serial number, model number, and the firmware version. I'm gonna save that. It's very easy to do an, a firmware update just simply by clicking on the firmware and it'll tell you if, if you're current or not. I'm actually in airplane mode so it won't let me do that right now. 
The next setting is the monitoring on and off. And the default setting for the Secure 360 is to always be your recording. So if you want to turn off recording, simply deselect this option here. Um, this will also disable any event recordings. So you'll want to make sure if you want to start recording to click that and it turns back on. Now it will reset itself after you've powered down and the next time you power on it will begin to record again. So you don't have to remember to turn it on each time. And it will actually tell you that your monitoring is stopped. If you could see that there on the top, stop monitoring. All right, so uh, because we're powered, it thinks we're in driving mode, it says that we're active. And this is where you change your detection settings. While you're driving, if the sensors detect an impact, it will automatically store that as a highlight as well as a collision. Now the difference between an impact and a collision, impact is say like a, a slight bump, maybe someone opens their car door into yours. A collision is when something hits your car. If you don't want this to create highlights while you're driving, you can turn it off completely. We recommend to keep it on though. In park mode, it's a little different. You have the option to turn on motion. And what this does, this enables the Doppler radar. So anytime the camera detects motion in your vehicle or around your vehicle, it will turn on and record a 30 second clip by default. Um, but if the motion continues, it will continue to record. If you want to, you could turn off those motion detections. Maybe you live in a city with lots going on around your car and you're finding that there's, it's picking up way too much. You could turn that off and it will only record during park mode if there's impact or a collision. And of course, if you're parked in a garage or uh, you know that nothing's going to happen, you don't want the camera running, you could turn off the detection completely, and this will save power. And next up, you have night vision. You'll be able to enable night vision in park mode or in driving mode. Now, night vision in driving mode is not automatically detected and enabled. So you'll need to turn that on and set the time that you want night vision active. The way that the night vision mode works is very similar to iOS's night shift. It's only active for a specific time that you set. By enabling night vision, you'll also turn off your HDR, high dynamic range recording. Scrolling through some other advanced settings, we see a logo LED, and this enables the light on the camera. So if you don't want that on, just turn it off. And the next option is to turn on and off a siren, which plays an audible warning when events are detected. This will potentially deter any thieves from breaking in your vehicle. The next option is HDR, which stands for High Dynamic Range. What this does, it balances the interior and exterior exposure so you have a good balance between the bright sunlight that might be outside and any dark shadows that might be inside your car. Now, it's not the best for every situation, so if it's, if it's dark and maybe it's a cloudy day, you, you may want to try turning it off and see how that works for you. Again, HDR is disabled for night vision recording. The next option we have our SD card settings, and this shows that it's installed and it's working. Um, this will give you any indication if there's any errors. Shows your total storage, your video highlights, buffered videos, and other files. So we recommend that you format your SD card 
in the camera prior to recording for maximum compatibility. So for any reason you need to do a factory reset, you know, maybe your camera's acting up or, you know, you want to start over with your settings, that's the factory reset. If you want to put your camera into standby mode, just click sleep and select that. So those are the camera settings. I'll go through the export process. Um, let's see here. Let's find a video to export. There's uh, the garage door opening. So I'm going to select this and click export. And when you click export, it's going to show you status of the export. And the MP4 file will go right into your photo library on your phone. There it is right there. 57 second clip. The standard view mode for video exports is going to be the split screen view. Right now, that's the only export option. But in the future, we are going to offer a full screen immersive view as well as VR view mode export options. So look out for those updates in the future. Now, you can use the iOS edit feature. So you could actually trim this video clip if you'd like, as well as use the export options that are built into the iOS. So if you want to send it, straight to YouTube, Facebook, Dropbox, or any other platform, that's where you'll do it. In the Secure 360 album, we could view all our exported clips, and this is stored locally, so you don't have to be connected to the camera to view these clips. From here, you could play back videos in full screen mode, and as you can see with the overlays, shows the time and date, the blue line signifies that this was a highlight that we made from a driving video. You have export options to your photo library. You can delete this clip. You can also change the playback mode from split screen to immersive view. So let's go back to our settings. And these settings are accessible when you're not connected to the camera. For camera specific settings, you do have to be connected to your camera's Wi Fi hotspot. So, if you need support with a camera, you go to support and then select the specific camera. You could send us feedback or a log from your app or camera if you're having any issues, and that way we could track down your specific issue. You can access our website's FAQs right from the app by selecting FAQ. And you could provide us any feedback if you have any requests or find any bugs within the system, please let us know. So those are the app settings. So one thing I did not talk about was the bell icon at the top right. That's for notifications for the 4G model specifically. So that was the demo of the Secure360 app. And if you have any questions, be sure to comment or email us at support at waylens.com. We're really excited to get these units shipped out and we do appreciate your support. Thanks so much.